Hello viewers, I am Manoranjan Burman and you are watching my YouTube channel Medical Lab. Today I am going to talk about determination of ABO and RH blood group system. The blood group classification is based on the absence or presence of two inherited antigenic substances on the red cell membrane. We know that ABO and RH blood group systems are immunologically significant and they are the most important blood group system. There are four major blood groups depending upon the presence or absence of certain antigens on the red cell membrane. So they are blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB and blood group O. Blood group A has antigen A on the red cell membrane and anti-B antibodies there in their plasma. If you talk about blood group B, then blood group B has B antigen on the red cell membrane and anti-A antibody is there in the plasma. AB blood group has both A and B antigen on the red cell membrane but there is no anti-A anti-B antibody in the plasma. Blood group O has neither antigen A nor antigen B but it has both the anti-A and anti-B antibody in the plasma. So this antigen A and antigen B will determine whether your blood group is A, B, AB or O. The Ressus system or in short RH system is the second most important blood group system. Antigen D is the most immunologically significant antigen in the RH system. Those individuals carry RH antigen on their red cell membrane will be considered to have RH positive blood or positive blood. Or on the other hand, those individuals who lack the RH antigen will be considered to have RH negative blood or negative blood. Let's take an example. If your RBC membrane has antigen A, then it will be considered as A blood group. If your RBC membrane has RH antigen along with the A antigen, then your blood group is A positive because Rh antigen is there. If your red cell membrane has only A antigen but there is no Rh antigen, then your blood group will be considered as A negative blood. So from this we need to remember that if Rh antigen is present, blood group is positive. If Rh antigen is absent, then blood group is negative. So for the remaining part, we have to move on to the computer screen. Please stay tuned till the end. Let's talk about the principle. The principle for determination of ABO and RH blood group is based on agglutination reaction, which is also known as antigen antibody reaction, where antigen binds with its corresponding antibody. When red blood cells carrying one or both the antigens are exposed to the corresponding antibodies, then they will interact with each other and form visible agglutination or clumping. Here our aim is to find out the antigen on the red cell membrane which is unknown antigen. If we can find out the antigen then we will know the blood group. We know that antigen bind with its corresponding antibody and show some visible agglutination or clumping. Suppose the structure of antibody A is this and structure of antigen A is this one and structure of antibody B is this and structure of antigen B is this. Now let's have a look into the picture. We have a mixture of antigen A and antigen B. If we add antibody B into this mixture, this antibody B will interact with antigen B rapidly and form visible agglutination or clumping. So suppose Antigens here in this mixture are unknown and we are using this known antibody to find out the unknown antigen. So we are using antibody B. So if antigen B is there in the mixture, then antibody B will interact with the antigen B and form visible agglutination. This is how we can identify an unknown antigen by using a known antibody. Now let's have a look at this picture on the right hand side. So we have a mixture of antigen A. So 
if we want to add antibody B into this mixture, then there will not be any agglutination or clumping because antibody B is there, but antigen B is not there to interact with this antibody B. So as a result, there is no agglutination. Or you can say antigen B is not there in the mixture. So if in the case, if we will add antibody A instead of antibody B, then there will be clumping because antigen A is there. So in this test, we will use some known antibody which is there in the antiserum. So the antiserum provided in the kit contains monoclonal antibody. There are three antisera in the test kit. Antisera A which contains antibody A. Antisera B which contains antibody B. Antisera D which contains antibody D. Let's take three drops of blood separately on a slide. We will add antisera A in the first drop of blood and mix well. If after mixing we can see agglutination, then we can say that the antibody A which is there in the antisera has interacted with antigen A. That is why so some visible agglutination or clumping. So at the end we can say antigen A is present in the blood. Now let's move on to the second drop of blood. We are going to add antisera B and mix well. If we can see agglutination after mixing, then we can say that antibody B from the antisera has interacted with the antigen B and showed some visible agglutination. So as a result, we can say that there is antigen B in the blood. That is why it has showed some visible agglutination. Now let's move on to the third drop of blood. Here we are going to add antisera D and mix well. So after mixing, if we can see agglutination or clumping, then you can say that anti D antibody is during the antisera D. So which has reacted with the RH antigen or antigen D and showed some visible agglutination or clumping. As a result, we can say that antigen D is there in the blood or we can say RH antigen is present. Now let's move on to the requirements. We need blood grouping kit which contains antisera A, antisera B, antisera D. Next, glass light. Then mixing stick, lancet, 70% alcohol, cotton and we need a marker also to mark the slide as A, B and D. Next I am going to talk about the procedure. Take a clean and dry glass light. Mark the glass light as A, B and D. Take a drop of blood above each of these three marking. Now we need the antisera A, B and D. Place a drop of antisera A above the marking A. Then place a drop of antisera B above the B marking. The next step place a drop of antisera D above the D marking. After adding the antisera, we need to mix the blood. Mix the drop of blood with the antiserum using a mixing stick separately. First you will mix at the A marking. Then with another mixing stick you are going to mix at the B marking. Then again for the D marking take another mixing stick and mix it. So you should not use the same stick for mixing these separate drops of blood. After mixing, rock the slide gently with back and forth movement. There is a final step is the observe the agglutination macroscopically at 2 minutes or the time may vary depending upon the testing kit. If there is agglutination or clumping in the marking A then it will look like this. If there will be agglutination or clumping in the marking B, then it will look like this. If there is agglutination in the D marking, then it will look like this. If you see there is no clumping or no agglutination, then it will look like this. Now look at the interpretation. After mixing, first we will observe marking A and B, then we will observe D. If there is agglutination in mark A, then blood group is A. 
If there is agglutination in mark B, then the blood group is B. If there is agglutination in both A and B, then the blood group is AB. If there is no agglutination in mark A and B both, then the blood group is O. Next, we have to observe the D marking. If there is agglutination in mark D, then the blood group is RH positive. If there is no agglutination in mark D, then the blood group is negative or you can say RH negative blood. Now we are going to visualize the interpretation. So we have taken some slides marked as A, B and D and we will see the interpretation visually. If there is agglutination in A but there is no agglutination in B and no agglutination in D then the blood group will be A negative. There is agglutination in A mark that means antigen A is there. There is no agglutination in B mark that means antigen B is not there. There is no agglutination in the marking D. So that means RH antigen is absent. So as a result we can say the blood group is A negative. Come to the right hand side. There is agglutination in A marking but there is no agglutination in B marking. Again there is agglutination in D marking. Now can you guess what is the blood group? Yes, it will be A positive. Because A antigen is there and RH antigen is there. So blood group is A positive. Next there is no agglutination in A marking. But there is agglutination in B marking. And there is no agglutination in D marking. The blood group will be B negative. I think I don't need to explain it again. Please check down the remaining parts carefully. So next, if there is no agglutination in A marking, but there is agglutination in B marking and D marking as well. So what is the blood group? It will be B positive. Next, there is agglutination in A marking, there is agglutination in B marking, and there is no agglutination in D mark. So what will be the blood group? There is agglutination in A and B, that means A and B both antigens are present. So it will be a B blood group. But in the D marking there is no agglutination, so it will be a B negative blood group. So if there is agglutination in A marking and agglutination in B marking as well as agglutination in D marking, there is agglutination in all the three marking, the blood group is a B positive blood. Next. There is no agglutination in A marking, there is no agglutination in B marking, there is no agglutination in D marking as well. So A and B both antigens are absent that means O blood group, again RH antigen is absent so it will be O negative blood group. So next we will see there is no agglutination in A marking, there is no agglutination in B marking but there is agglutination in D marking. So A and B antigens are absent that means O blood group RH antigen is present there is because there is A and B both antigens are absent so it will be O blood group and there is agglutination in the D marking that means RH antigen is present that means the blood group will be O positive blood group. There are some important instructions which I am going to share with you which you need to take care while performing the test. You need to ensure that your glass slide is clean and dry. Please do not allow the antisera dropper to touch the blood while dropping the antisera. Avoid intermixing the antisera. It can cause false positive or false negative results. I hope you are clear about the topic. Please like, please like, share and comment. And those who are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you.